Hey everyone, this is Goku Sun DVZ. Welcome back for just a little discussion video I thought I'd bring up today and talk a little bit just briefly about, in my opinion, seven game companies that are really influential and really important to the gaming industry as a whole, not just one time period. And we're looking at seven companies who have been around since. At the very minimal, the early 90s, if not before, like 70s and 80s. So, don't expect uh, me to be discussing this about, obviously, game companies like Microsoft. Since they weren't really doing video games at the time, and Xbox didn't exist until the beginning of the 2000s. So, we won't be discussing about them. And since that's be at least early 90s or prior... Don't expect to see some of the other more modern, like most of the indie companies you have today, than exist then. So it's going to be more bigger companies, but I specifically chose these seven companies because of their importance as a whole to gaming. The first of these companies that I think is very key in importance is, of course, one of the seven, Atari. Though Atari of today is very different than Atari of, of course, many decades ago back in the mid-1970s. Korean games, of course, influential such as Korean Pong, which really was revolutionary at the time. Today we look back and think it's crazy, I think, but really it was the game more or less to really create and really start gaming as a whole. Keep that in mind. Uh, also, in fact, they would create some of the most important games ever. Of course, as I said, Pong being one of them. Uh, they also created other super important games of that time period, of course. Specifically known titles for, of course, being on the Atari 2600. You have definitely influential titles such as Asteroids was a big one that they created, which became a real signature game. Another really important come game and stuff that they created was a little game besides Pong and that. They also created a little game called Space Invaders, which is very key and important. I would say of all, personally for myself, classic Atari games, Space Invaders will always probably be my personal favorite. Just because I just like... I always did like the simplicity to a lot of the early Atari games and a lot of the early games in general of the Atari 2600. I personally never owned a 2600. I do own Atari Anthology Collection on the original Xbox. So, and that has like 75 Atari 2600 games on the disc. So that's pretty good and it's awesome that I get to go occasionally replay games like Asteroids, as I said, Pong, and, of course, Space Invaders and many other games. But these are definitely three of the most key games that Atari would create. Now, Atari would change over the years mainly because of, at one time or another, its parent owner, uh, that being Warner Brothers, of course. Now, today is a different version of Atari we have. And, of course, today, Atari is owned by Namco Bandai. But no one can deny the importance of Atari to the gaming industry as a whole. With creating the 2600, uh, 52 wasn't really important. 7800, though, really did take a lot of leaps forward and being backwards compatible with the 2600. So, the Atari 7800 really was the first game console to have backwards compatibility, which is quite fascinating. Now, that's just a little bit of some basic brief stuff on Atari. Now on to game company number two, I consider very key and important to gaming as a whole. It's a little company you may or may not have heard of. I'm just joking, you've heard of. Number two game company that I consider really important and key for games is Sega. Which of course you hear music in the background from Sonic the Hedgehog, the original, on the Sega Genesis. Sega really took a lot of elements and things that Atari did, and they took them to the whole next level. First, you had their first uh, step into gaming as a whole with a little console called the 
the SG-1000, which was released in the early 80s, which was their first home console, though it only was released domestically in Japan. It never got released outside of its home nation. Now, fun fact quickly about Sega. Sega was actually founded by Americans. Yes, not Japanese. Though it is based today, it is most definitely, of course, a signature Japanese company. But it was actually founded by non-Japanese, believe it or not. That's just a fun little fact. Don't believe me. Just do basic game history and look up some stuff about the early days of Sega. Sega's been around since actually the 70s. It's easily one of the oldest game companies. It's been around about as long as Atari, believe it or not. Though there's another company we'll be bringing up soon enough that is older than everyone else. But, of course, with Sega, then you had the jump in 1985 to its second home console, which would get a worldwide release. Though it would mainly do very well in its home country of Japan, it also did very well in Brazil, of all places, and it did extremely well in the United Kingdom, or the UK for short. And of course, that is the Sega Master System. Now, personally, it's only been recent years I finally got my hands on a Master System. Of course, one of the cool features about the Master System was the fact it had one built-in game into the console. See, even if you didn't have a game at start, you could still turn on and play a game that was automatically built into the console. That was a cool and unique idea that sadly we never really saw again in consoles. Which, it's a shame because that was a cool idea and feature. But many beloved franchises, of course many incredible rail shooters and beat em ups would debut on of course the Master System. Uh, as well as for instance, a signature franchise known as Double Dragon, which is definitely a key importance. Um, also, it saw the introduction of one of its most beloved franchises of all time on the Master System, and of course, that was obviously a little franchise called Fantasy Star, which was their equivalent to, of course, Final Fantasy, and in my opinion, a criminally underrated JRPG franchise. I'm going to quickly just mention some brief things about the Sega Genesis, and then we'll move on to company number three. But, with that said, of course, the Sega Genesis, which is easily the most successful console in sales numbers that they ever had, thanks to games such as uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, which became, of course, Sega's mascot, and still is technically Sega's mascot to this day. It really was revolutionary for the time given, the speed and everything, and of course we always had the phrase blast processing power and everything. I got a kick out of it, and Sega does what Nintendo don't and all that. Marketing actually worked very well in the 90s. Of course they would see many great games, they would see some cool exclusives such as Eternal Champions, a underrated great 16-bit fighting game in my opinion. Also, the best version of, of course, Mortal Kombat 1, at least because it allowed you to at least be able to do blood and things. Though, in other areas, not the greatest, but I actually also really liked their port, of course, of Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition, which was actually the first version of Street Fighter 2 I ever owned. And many other classics like uh, Streets of Rage, Golden Axe, there is just so many great games that Sega came out with, and the importance of Sega cannot be denied. In modern day, Sega is well known for a little franchise called the Yakuza series. Now I'll move on to game company number three, which needs no introduction. And it is easily the oldest of all the companies, though technically it did not start as a game company, keep in mind. Game company number three is, of course... A little company called Nintendo. Nintendo was, of course, originally actually started back in the 19th century, back in the 1800s, believe it or not. They were around, they've been around for probably about 120 plus years. They've been around a very long time. They were originally a card game and board game type company, though specifically most well known for their card games and stuff, which 
is fascinating, and they actually still do card game stuff to this day in Japan. You can actually order, like, special Nintendo character-like editions of, like, some of their classic card games and stuff, which is actually pretty cool. But Sega's importance to gaming cannot be understated. Much like, I feel, companies like the importance of Atari, Sega are just as important as Nintendo. These are three companies that are very key and important for the existence of gaming as a whole. Uh, the fact is, I mean, of course, they originally released Mario Brothers on, of course, a little game called, or rather, console called Atari. They also created a game called Donkey Kong, which, of course, was a mistranslation, obviously. It was supposed to originally be Monkey Kong. It's quite a long thing and it more had to do with specifically like uh, copyright laws and stuff in place is why they ended up changing it though to Monkey or Donkey Kong rather. It's a very interesting long story. But, and of course creating the franchise symbol that is Mario, uh, Crean, and of course teaming up with an incredible British game studio known as Rare. Of course, today owned by Microsoft, but still, Raider combined with Nintendo did some incredible things. Then, uh, of course, Nintendo would release the NES with incredible games such as the Super Mario Brothers series of games, as well as we would see the creation of, of course, The Legend of Zelda. We would see games like Kirby. We would see other amazing games, the original Final Fantasy, and the Super Nintendo, which would create so many things, and also they would, thanks to a specific individual, would create the Game Boy, with, of course, have a great game that revolutionized things like puzzle games and things, Tetris. And, of course, the one man that is most important to success in the creation of handheld gaming as a whole goes to the father and creator of the Game Boy and his key importance to Nintendo, and that is Gunpei Yokoi. The history and the importance of Gunpei Yokoi cannot be underestimated. And fun little fact before I change to game company number four, Gunpei Yokoi also created the Bandai Wonder Swan handheld, which of course you've seen, I've shown I have. I have the Wonder Swan in the Wonder Swan color. I still eventually want to get my hands on the Crystal Wonder Swan which is the most superior version. But Wonder Swan was interesting, though sadly underutilized and only released strictly domestically in Japan. But Gunpei Yokoi's importance to Nintendo cannot be understated, just as Miyamoto's importance to Nintendo. These are the two men that really led, I felt, really pushed the gaming revolution of the 80s, mainly Nintendo has to thank mainly these two individuals, Miyamoto, for incredible software and game development he had done, and Gunpei Yokoi for being a revolutionary, and creating also the Nintendo-like game and play watches and stuff he created, which really was like the precursor to the Game Boy, made in the mid-80s, which I really recommend you check out some history on these things. Or, if you want me in the future to do more in-depth on some, on gaming history on a specific item or subject or company, let me know. Next, the fourth of the seven game companies I consider very essential and important to gaming as a whole. So, so far we've mentioned some few basic things about, of course, Atari, Sega, and Nintendo. Game company number four that is key to the success and evolution of gaming as a whole is a company that would start in the 80s, or more towards the mid-80s, I should say. Game company number four is known today as Namco Bandai, but originally just Namco. Namco was very key in importance. It had games releasing all the way back onto the old, like, Atari consoles, and of course the NES and stuff. Namco created incredible games. You might be surprised, actually, about and I did not know. Fun fact, Namco of course created, which is not as big a surprise, created a little franchise called Pac-Man, 
which became revolutionary and important to the arcade scene. It would also create another important little arcade classic called Dig Dug, which became well-known classics. You would also see game other classic games over the years that would become important. And of course, Namco would continue growing throughout the 80s into the 90s. In the 90s, Namco would become a titan in fighting games because Namco would end up creating a little franchise called the Tekken series, which actually I failed to mention on the importance of Sega as well, of course, creating the Virtual Fighter series. But Tekken took things from Virtual Fighter and took it way farther, and as well as we would see also the creation just a couple years later from Bandai, another little franchise. One of the first weather weapon based. 3D fighting game franchises, there was three key specific weapon-based franchises in the early days. There was Battle Ring the Tushinden, which only lasted three games, and then Gal the 90s. Another franchise that sadly gets overlooked and it only had two games, but incredible, called Bushido Blade. And then this one, Soul Blade, in Japan known as, of course, Soul Edge, would be the precursor. And the game that would create and lead the birth of the Soul Calibur series. So Namco created two of the most important key 3D fighting game franchises of all time that are still going to this day. With both Tekken and Soul Calibur. So that's a key importance. I mean, both franchises cannot be understated how important they are to 3D fighting games as a whole. Seriously, Namco's importance to gaming is serious. I mean, the amount of incredible games though they've done over the years, other than just those, they've created many other great franchises. And of course, later time, Namco also created many of, of course, the Gundam games, as well as many other things, such as the Digimon series. Namco would get their hands on a lot of definitely copyrights and stuff to a lot of big name titles. But Namco's importance cannot be understated to gaming as a whole. Now we go on to game company number five of key imports. This company in importance is not to be underestimated. Their key importance, especially to JRPGs as a whole, is a little company today known as, of course, Square Enix, is the fifth of the seven game companies. Square Enix, though, at that time was just Square and then also the company Enix. Enix, by themselves, would, of course, become known best for creating a little JRPG series that is still going to this day pretty strong, especially in Japan. A little company, or rather game franchise, known as Dragon Quest, which is huge in their home country of Japan. Its importance cannot be understated just as other great JRPG franchises, such as Fancy Star from, of course, Sega. Uh, but, of course, at the time when this important game for Square would be released, they were close to going bankrupt. And they created, and it was named Final Fantasy because it was to be the last game ever from the studio, though at the time, Square did create some other cool games, such as would be, well, involved in games that are technically, I guess you could consider knockoffs, but games similar to Space Harrier and other classics, which Sega actually did. But Square would create a game called Final Fantasy, and of course the rest is now, what they say, history. Of course, to this day, both Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy are two of the most important franchises to RPGs as a whole. Final Fantasy revolutionized RPGs, and it is responsible for really introducing, well, RPGs to the Western world, especially JRPGs, the whole turn-based combat system, which I'm still a fan of to this day. And we would see many other things throughout the years. Like I said, of course, the original Final Fantasy would get ported, of course, to the original NES, 
Then we would get weird mix-ups with the tiles on the Super Nintendo. We would get Final Fantasy IV, but named Final Fantasy II, and we would get Final Fantasy VI, named Final Fantasy III. And, of course, for me personally, Final Fantasy III slash VI was the very first JRPG I ever played. So, that explains why I'm very biased towards a company, specifically Square. Square is one of my three favorite game companies of all time. Because of creating the Final Fantasy series, it's responsible for helping Dragon Quest continue. It's responsible for my beloved series, Kingdom Hearts, and responsible for many other great games. Square also decided to do an experiment in the 90s with a little completely weird polar opposite genres of RPGs and survival horror that they saw other companies doing and they decide to try their own experiment with the whole genre. And of course, that being specifically Parasite Eve, which is really key and a fascinating idea and concept that turned out really good, honestly, in the 90s. But Square's importance to gaming as a whole cannot be denied or underestimated at all. Square revolutionized gaming as a whole, especially for RPGs. That whole genre, they're responsible for the series Mother, also known as, in America, of course, Earthbound, Secrets of Mana, Trials of Mana, and, well, there's too many other Square franchises named, like I said, Bushido Blade. They did, and they did some actually honor rail shooters and other interesting games as well. Uh... Also, Illusions of Gaia, or Secret of Evermore. There is so many different titles done and developed by Square. It's kind of ridiculous how many good games they made, and still make to this day. Next, we come to game company number six of seven. And this company is also very key and important, and is another one of my top three favorite game companies of all time. So, with that said, game company number six, key important to gaming as a whole, is a little company known as Capcom, which is still around to this day. Capcom key importance, I mean, Capcom's been around since, like, the 80s and early, very early. I mean, they their importance to beat-em-ups and fighting games cannot be underestimated. They revolutionized those genres of beat-em-ups of fighting games, of survival horror. They have been key and important to all of these areas. They've never been the most important company to, of course, JRPGs, such as some of the other companies like Square, Nintendo, Sega, and oh yeah, technically also Namco, which is responsible for the Tales series, of course, as well. But Capcom is responsible for, of course, Game franchises, classics, such as I already mentioned, Street Fighter, which the very original Street Fighter game was released in 1987. So Street Fighter, also known as Fighting Streets, on the uh, TurboGrafx-16, which was the only regular home console release originally for the original Street Fighter, which is quite interesting. But of course, then we would see 1991 roll around, and the release of a little game called Street Fighter 2, which would completely revolutionize the genre as a whole and really bring fighting games to the forefront and lead to the golden age of fighting games in the 90s, which definitely cannot be denied. And it's nice to see today fighting games again as a much bigger genre again in gaming. I'm glad to see fighting games are one of the more successful genres once again after the huge success of the 90s. Capcom did so many great things. They created that, they created the incredible Street Fighter Alpha series, the crossovers of course with Capcom and Marvel combined. Capcom with SNK doing incredible crossover fighting games. Of course they would also create a little franchise called Final Fight which technically does take part in the universe of Street Fighter. Final Fight, which would introduce us to characters such as Cody, such as Poison, Hugo, uh, Guy, 
and of course also a certain Mike Hagar and other characters which would become important and a lot of them would be introduced into the Alpha series in our future Street Fighter games. But nevertheless, Final Fight is a great beat-em-up. It's the top rival beat-em-up series to, of course, Streets of Rage. It would also, of course, create an incredible series and really the franchise responsible for the huge success of the late 90s and early to mid 2000s of survival horror. And of course that is a little franchise called Biohazard or in America Resident Evil. The importance of Resident Evil cannot be underestimated. They would also do great games such as a little series called Clock Tower, which is an interesting, really good survival horror series in my opinion. But they, Capcom's importance to gaming as a whole cannot be denied. Not only, I mean, they're responsible for the huge success, really, of fighting games, of beat-em-ups, and being, of course, key player in survival horror. Three genres they did very well in, and it's nice to see Resident Evil making its glorious return, and it's nice to see Street Fighter, honestly, starting to get more respect again. And, of course, unfortunately, though, Final Fight has been almost forgotten in recent years, which is unfortunate, because Streets of Rage has managed to make a revival. I just hope, eventually, we can see a revival of the Final Fight series. And many other classics, such as uh, Captain Commando, Strider, which, of course, we've had a few Strider games in recent years, at least, which I recommend you check out one of the, the last Strider game that was released. It's actually really good. But with that said, let's go on to game company number seven. But first I'll mention briefly three runner-up game companies that don't quite make my list of seven very key important game companies, but still very important in their own right. The first of the three companies, which has actually been around since the early 80s, believe it or not, is a little company called Activision. Activision, of course, originally, is uh, actually was responsible for a great classic game and a huge success on Atari called Pitfall. And many other games throughout the years Activision has created and is responsible for, though they've also killed a lot of franchises or over milked, namely franchises like the Tony Hawk series, Guitar Slash uh, Rock Band, as well as many others with that said. But whatever, game company number two of the three honorable mentions is, even no matter how much I may feel about the company today, I can't deny the importance of this company in the early days in the 80s and into the 90s, bringing many key important sports franchises for people who like sports and racing games such as that, and they actually made nearly 50% of the entire game library for the Panasonic 3DO. And that is the company Electronic Arts. In the early days, Electronic Arts actually was a good company in the 90s. They weren't completely all-out, huge evil greed that they are today. But that's because at the time you had the one run the company, the founder of Electronic Arts. Which is why it was a very different company in those days. And the third of the three honorable mentions, key companies that I consider important Though they didn't really revolutionize things, they were only really around since the mid-90s, so which is why they're only getting honorable mention, and of course that is PlayStation, or Sony rather. No more recent years for things like Santa Monica, and of course their division known as uh, Naughty Dog. Actually, and yes, in the seventh company is a company I despise nowadays like mostly EA and, well, and a little company, Activision. But this company's key importance to gaming as a whole cannot be denied in the 80s. They are responsible for classics like Frogger in the arcades. They would end up also being responsible for incredible games. They are one of the reasons we have the whole subgenre known as Metroidvania today because they created the Castlevania series, a very beloved series. They would end up creating the Master Code, of course, game, 
code. They also are responsible for incredible franchises such as the Contra series as well. They would also take their foot and they would take many things Capcom did in Survival Horror and go much farther than that. And of course, that being a franchise called Silent Hill. Konami would be a little bit briefly involved, of course, though more Team Ninja, though more so, of course, with a great little series called Fatal Frame. But, with that said, and this company I'm talking about, its key importance cannot be denied from the early days of gaming, the 80s and 90s. It's a game company called Konami. It is definitely a very important company. It was also involved in the development of a lot of the Metroid games in the early days with Nintendo. Of course, as we say, Metroidvania. Konami is important to this subgenre known as Metroidvania cannot be underestimated or denied. Its importance is ridiculous, much like Capcom, and I'm sorry, I forgot to mention a little franchise for Capcom, of course, their classic, The Blue Bomber, of course, Mega Man series, Mega Man X, and Legends. But with Konami, they would also end up buying a little company called Hudson Soft, which they would end up responsible for last and easily the weakest of the Bloody Roar series, and then they would kill Hudson Soft, and sadly, then we would see the Konami we know today, which is a Pachiko machine company, which sucks. Because I remember back when Konami was a highly respected name in gaming. I remember when Konami was respected. I remember when Activision was respected. I remember when Electronic Arts was respected. And I hate seeing all three of these companies, what they've become, super greedy, nasty companies that only care about milking franchises for just money. The only credit I can give Konami is at least they released some really good collections in recent time, like the, the great collection of Contra, but more specifically, the, collection, the two different collections of, of course, the Castlevania games. Of course, I need to get the second Castlevania collection, but uh, of course I love Castlevania Requiem. Rather, Symphony of the Night Requiem, which is a great collection of two classics. Of course, that being Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which is the best Castlevania game, and it easily maybe the best, like, uh, was it, I'm thinking of Metroidvania game. I like Castlevania Symphony of the Night more than Super Metroid. Super Metroid is a great game, don't get me wrong, but... Castlevania Symphony of Night is just a game that is on such a high pedestal that almost no other company can come close. But anyways, I'll get right up this video. Also quickly give a little head nod I forgot to mention about the Square, Chrono Trigger's game, and Chrono Cross. But yeah, these are in my...